All right, so in this lecture, we're going to be going over Sketchbook and some of the tool sets that we will be using throughout this course. If you do happen to have any other specific questions about Sketchbook in terms of certain tools, certain panels, certain tabs, I will leave a link to the Sketchbook website where they go more in depth on the interface of what Sketchbook has to offer. I encourage you to open up Sketchbook and sketch along with me and kind of follow some of the things that I'm going to be doing to kind of learn the interface. So Sketchbook has a lot of great tools at its disposal to use. And the biggest one that I find is that's the most useful is this ability to go back. And so all I have to do is hit Control Z or the undo button um, on my tablet and it allows me to erase the previous line that I've made. So if I make this old one I don't like and I can just hit a button and then go back over it again. And so the other great option in sketchbook is this layer editor over to the right here or to the left sorry and so say i sketch all of these profiles on one layer and then i can go to another layer if i hit that plus in the top right hand corner and now i can start sketching over these bodies and so if i do want to erase these lines then that allows me to erase them without affecting anything on the bottom layer that i have and then the next thing is the brush panel over to the right here. And so right now I'm drawing on an, on an F brush, which is a harder brush. So my lines are much lighter than the ones that I previously drew over. And so if I want to change back to the ink pen to draw more profiles, I'll change back to the, to the bottom layer and I'll draw another profile there. And then I'll come back to this top, I'll go back to the F and now I'll I'll create this other profile that I'll, that I'll start to follow. And so the next things that I use quite often in Sketchbook are these pucks up here. So the first one is the color puck. So I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to change this color to, let's say, I'm going to change it to this teal. Now I'll go to a 7B brush, which is a little softer, so my lines are much thicker. So maybe I'll just start to add some, some shadows under some of them. And so this just gives us the ability to sketch in different colors. And so in this brush palette, we have uh, different airbrushes. And so if I'm going to create another layer, so usually everything that I do in terms of uh, the process, so first sketching the outer profiles, then doing the contour lines, then doing shadows, and now doing shading, I do on different layers. So I'm not affecting anything else as I'm going through. So say I want this part to be shaded in a teal color, I can go to my airbrush and start shading. And then after that, I can start erasing around. So again, without affecting any of the layers that are under it, only affecting the, 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 the airbrush layer that I have active. And so now you can see that this part is starting to get shaded and we're starting to get more of a form over this whole um, outer contour. And so this other puck over here has uh, um, gives us the ability to change the size. So if I click and drag right, if I click and drag left, you can see that the size is starting to change. So if I come back with this airbrush and I make it bigger, I can start to shade um, in a bigger area. And then also I can change it with the, for the eraser, I can change it with any pen that I'm using. And then the other great tools that I use are these guide tools. So if I change back to the 7B, but I change it back to black and I'm going to go back into my contour layer. So if I turn that off, you can see the contours are gone and it kind of blackens out or darkens out the layer. If I turn it back on, it gives me the contours again. So if I come to this uh, guide here, the ellipse guide, I can start to get different forms of ellipses. I can change the size and then I can start sketching different types of ellipses. I can bring that down and maybe bring it down here and you can see that I'm starting to um, get some type of profile inside of this guy. And so I encourage you to take 15-20 um, minutes after this lecture and really delve into the different features that Sketchbook offers. And so taking the time to get some of the ideas that you might have out, into, out in your head onto paper and just really get comfortable with the program before moving on to Fusion 360. Just getting a feel for the interface and some of the customizations that Sketchbook has to offer. You can see you have all of the windows that I have open that are checkmarked. So if I want the Copic library open, I can hit that and you can see the Copic library pop up over here to the right. And so just getting comfortable with the 
software and getting a feel for how Sketchbook runs on your computer and how your tablet feels to you. So take, again, 15, 20 minutes, play with Sketchbook, get some ideas out there, generate some concepts, and I will see you in the next lecture, which we will be going over Fusion 360.